All right, CAD fans, we're going to kick it up a notch and move into 3D. You can see this is a kitchen cabinet schematic that I made up. I did a little kitchen project over in Eastport, and I drew up a lot of the cabinets to be able to visualize how it was going to go together. Uh, the blue is plywood, and the brown is maple uh, face frame. But in any case, uh, I draw them up in 3D, and then I know this dropped off the screen, but I'd uh, reference in six different views, dimension them, and print them. Uh, so that worked out pretty well. Uh, so I'd have that in the shop when I was putting them together. Uh, but let's switch back to this other one briefly. And I want to show you, you can print these things to 3D as well. Uh, you just select the Print to 3D checkbox uh, with the PDF and hit Print. And here we go. That should do it. Let me just put it on the desktop. Yeah, go ahead. And then when it comes up as, it looks like this, which has similar drag and spin capabilities. So if you draw something up in 3D, uh, you can impress your friends uh, by letting them dig around in it. And, and uh, works pretty well, I guess is what I meant to say. So anyway, let's close this and go back to the MicroStation file. Uh, maybe I, I should point this out too. If you look in the print stuff, if you got people that want just like a JPEG image or something, you can also select uh, JPEGs. Uh, you can do PNGs. You can do TIFFs. As long as you just pick the driver, you can output as pretty much anything you want. Sometimes you want a, a nice looking JPEG or something. Uh, that's a good way to do it. In this particular case, I am using an illustration presentation. So let's switch that to wireframe, which is what you're used to seeing. And switch to tile, so you can see all four views. Isometric, uh, right, front, and top. So this is sort of the standard setup for a, for a CAD file in 3D. So there's an example. Let's uh, do a new file. And we'll call it like week nine. And we're going to pick up a different uh, seed file. Oh, we got to do this again, don't we? Uh, seed shortcut. I made a shortcut so I could figure it out quicker. I'm going to pick up the seed 3D file. And then hit save. And there it is. A brand new, fresh 3D file. Um, one of the things I like to do is go to Settings and View Attributes, shut off the ACS Triad and all the different views. You can do it. You can have it some and not in the others if you want. I usually just shut them all off. That just shows you which axes you're in, which doesn't seem to help at all, a whole heck of a lot. But then we can look at the solids modeling stuff. So these are the standard tools you'd use in drawing in 3D, such as a very simple slab solid. Let's, let's start with that. So you'll notice my AccuDraw down here now has three dimensions to it. So I can go this way, looking down at the top that way, and then to get the third dimension in it, you have to just move the mouse into a different view, either the right view or the front view, and there it is. So there's my box. So another way to do this, uh, if you want to play around with it right in isometric, which is sort of a 3D view, is we'll pick the same slab solid, and we start in the top view. So what I want to do is hit the T key. Uh, you can also have S for side and F for front. Notice how the AccuDraw thing keeps flipping around. I'm going to use T to start with, and because that's where we started before. We did the T and start on the top, and then you go up your distance, and then over a distance, and then you put your depth in, however you want to do that. And you can do that by front 
flip around do that way basically use that side front top routine S F and T to move the cursor around to draw the same thing so that seems easy enough I'll let you play around with some of the other primitive solids uh, and let's work our way back here to the multiple view mode and I want to show you a couple other tools that I like to use normally I'm going to switch to red and draw a circle here I'm going to drill a hole through this thing okay now notice as I drill that hole or I draw the circle that it doesn't necessarily line up right with everything else that's something to keep in mind that you're in 3D space now here and it may be a little more complicated to get things where you want to but the tool I'm going to use here is where is it here cut solids by curves okay it says select first solid I want to drill through that block with that cutting profile and then I think you just click one more time with the left and then you get a hole through proposed and notice I have to click one more time to accept it and now I have a solid with a hole through it let's look back look at it back over here and let's see that's that one's got a hole in it now I can also turn but you saw me turn this off on the other file I'll put illustration on and sometimes that makes it a little bit easier to see too you know there's there's my two blocks Maybe a little bit easier to draw in that, to put in a sphere or something, you know, whatever you want to draw. That's one of the system, one of the modes I often draw in is illustration, just because it makes it easier to see the stuff. Uh, let's see, other tools. Switch back to the other thing. Let's see. How about this one? I'll draw in. I'll draw in green this time. Use Smart Line, our old friend. We've done that a lot of Smart Line, haven't we? Notice how it looks funny because I'm in front mode. I need to go back to top mode. Let's just draw some kind of funny looking shape here. Okay. And what I'm going to do with this is extrude it. And that is this tool here. No, that's not that tool. Solid by extrusion. There it is. Says that way. No, I want top. I'm going to extrude it down to the front view so I can move it up a little bit, zoom out. Maybe I can make it about like that. It's a pretty funny looking green thing there, isn't it? So you can basically take a, any 2D shape and expand it into a 3D shape. All the copy and move and all that stuff, that's all the same. Well, these, like, I, like I'm showing here, it's a little bit different because you're in 3D mode. And often what I'll do is try to move things in one view and then move it in another view to, to, to align it. But uh, that should get you started there. One more tool that I use a lot is Modify Solid Entity, and that is right here. Maybe we want to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to take a corner off it. You can mess around with it quite a bit with full dynamics, or maybe you want to just do one face at a time. All right, let's take the block here on this front face and move it in a little bit. It's pretty easy to mess around with stuff that way. But there's some basic 3D stuff to get you started. Uh, it'll be fun.